Speaking with Stuart Edelstein, he is the instructor for the course Whence Our Words, an Exploration of the Sources of English. I'm John Kroll, and this course is presented by Berkshire Ali. And uh, so, Stuart, you know, there's a zillion different uh, ways that you can look at different examples and, and different, uh, different roads you can go down. But there is a certain structure uh, to how this course uh, is set up, and, and, and you're going to kind of go through and make sure people have that, uh, well, be able to follow the tree you talked about uh, as far as, uh, as how language has, was created and how it is today. I am, but I'm also going to go off on tangents. The basic structure of the course, we're going to start with Indo-European, as I mentioned, uh, starting with that taproot. And then we're going to go up the base of the tree <coughs> with Anglo-Saxon roots, Latin roots, Greek roots, up to the Romance language roots for English words. And then we're going to talk about words based on languages that are not in this tree at all, that are grafted on. From there, we're going to talk about eponyms, words based on names of people and places, onomatopoeias based on sounds. A lot of birds, for example, are named based on the sounds they make. Mm. And then we're going to get on to uh, ep uh, euphemisms, swear words, uh, sources for names of places and people's names. But in the process, there are these wonderful tangents we can go off on. Mm -hmm. If you were going on a hike, and you want to get from place A to place B, and there was a spur trail to see a waterfall or a scenic vista, you're going to take it. And that's what I do in this course. And so, for example, I'm going to start with the history of speech and the history of writing from the very, very beginning, as best we can figure those things out, prehistory. There's obviously some speculation there. But in the course of that, what's not speculative is where our letters come from, where the letters of the alphabet come from. And they come from pictograms, uh, symbolized uh, images of things. So for example, the letter A, picture a capital letter A, you turn it on its side, and the top of the A is at the bottom, so turn it over. And what you see is the head of an ox. And mm -hmm. that's what you see now, because the extended parts of the A are the horns. Mm -hmm. Or the letter M, the letter M comes from a pictogram for water. If you were asked to draw water, you'd probably make a wave, and that's where mm -hmm. the letter M comes from. And that's just, those are just two of the 26 examples. Every letter comes from a pictogram. Likewise, we're gonna get into the history of England, because for example, unless you know what happened in 1066 with the Norman Conquest, you won't appreciate why it is that we have so many words based on French, mm -hmm. and why it is that the more upper class words for what gets put on the table are different than the more common words. So, uh, for example, uh, beef is what comes from a cow. Beef is from French, and cow is the Anglo-Saxon. It's just one of many examples. Um, and we're also going to get into mythology. Greek mythology is crucial to understand in order to figure out where certain words came from. Uh, those are just a few examples of the various tangents we're going to go on. And rather than just feeding it in lecture format, I'm going to do it in question and answer style, so it'll be a very lively thing. Uh, among other things, I'm going to assign, assign the students the task of going to a supermarket and looking for everything they can find that's eponymous. That is, every food they can find that's based on someone's name or the name of a place. And we're going to have a lot of fun with that. It'll be quite a shopping list. <laughs> it is. And I, and I think, you know, uh, understanding, you know, where words come from, you know, and, and I think it's just kind of a fascinating thing that people usually do even when they're driving around. They see street uh, signs with, with certain names attached to them and, and wonder, well, where did it come from when you're, when you're curious. But, but we're actually even talking about words that we use every day, you know, that are based from, you know, a, a root that, that we've, it's, really, it's really fascinating. Fascinating. Um, so it's, it is. Well, much of what I'm going to be covering will be common words, but I'm also going to get into some rather arcane words for the fun of it. Mm -hmm. Because if you understand, for example, Latin roots, you can look at a word you've never seen before. And by understanding prefixes and suffixes that derive from Latin, you can figure out what the word means. Um, here's one, sesquipedalian. There's a, a <laughs> real fancy word, right? Well, P-E-D means foot, 
Sasqui means one and a half. Mm -hmm. So Sasqui pad means one and a half feet. Sasqui pedalian is a word that means a word that's very long. It's one and a half feet long. So we figured that out. And there'll be no test on it. No, <laughs> no we don't do any tests. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll continue the conversation. We'll, we'll touch upon some of uh, Stuart's favorite newer words uh, right after this.